Let me say this one. <laughs> Good evening. Freezing. I'll wait for some eyes to come on. And I'm going to do a couple of little live streams here. The first one is a great, about the great Brexit betrayal. I want to do a detailed video all about it. But this was just because I'm not, I'm busy. I'm going up to see Gus tomorrow. I need to go to Telford. I need to go to Rotherham. I need to make a video detailing to everyone what's coming next year. My plans for next year. My plans for next year, which is really to bring the whole, the rape of Britain. This is just thing. Yeah, I'm going to do a detailed video about all of these. But a date I wanted to get out to all of you. I'm just catching up. I had a, a week last week where, without sounding like I'm feeling sorry for myself, I had a terrible, fucking, a terrible week, man. I, I had my little boy, he's nine years old, coming home, who had been threatened to be violently, not even beaten up, but violently hurt by some 12-year-old boys because of, me, because of my politics. Also, then my daughter was targeted by the same groups of boys. Um, and it was a realisation that as my kids grow up, this isn't going to be good. Anyway, so last week, I'd, I'd done nothing really last week, apart from trying to sort out my own problems. I had to be there every minute. Well, my kids were coming home scared each day. So then they were approached somewhere else. So I had a week of trying to get my, my, my own house in order at home and make sure that my kids are okay and make sure that... And today I've waited and they, they've come home from school fine and they're okay. And I spent a week, I went to see three parents, three different sets of parents um, of the children who had threatened to hurt my kids. Um, who are three years older. It's like, you're 12, mate. It's a nine-year-old kid. What are you doing? But anyway, I saw it out. I met their parents. L nice parents. One lovely lady. She's from Uganda. Beautiful woman. Living a hard life. But yeah, anyway, so they were my own problems. That's not what I'm actually here to talk about. But, that's, but I, I was quiet last week. And I saw... I've done one little video from here. This is my mate's shop. I've done one little video from here. And I saw people... Uh, I uploaded a video. I saw people moaning. And I was just thinking, oh, the first video you put up this week. I thought, for the last week, I've had my own problems. My own problems at home. That are a, a direct, direct knock-on from my politics are now affecting my kids. And they're fit and they're scared. So I was, anyway, I was trying to sort that out. But there's 10,000 now watching this. So, on the 1st of December, just under two weeks' time, we need to march. We need to march against Theresa May. We need to march against the establishment. This is the biggest betrayal of a democratic vote this country's ever seen. And more details will be coming out and actually, more details will be coming out. And, and I'll just see in the comments, because people are still talking about the situation with my kids. The parents were great that I went and saw. The parents were great. And, um, and it's all sorted now. And I said, so rather than going up to my children and asking them questions, if you want to ask me any questions, I'm free to chat. Come and ask me your questions. You know what I mean, don't be, don't be approaching my children. Ask my children if they're racist when they're kids. So, but anyway, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So that's why I was quiet last week and I, I was in complete meltdown, to be honest, because <laughs> I, I didn't, know what to, um, didn't know what to do. But that's my first point of my video here. My first point of my video is the great betrayal. 1st of December, make your plans. I'm only starting now from tomorrow. I know that Jared Batten has agreed to be involved. Uh, in fact, I'm only just putting this into place. I'm, I've watched what's gone on and because I was away from... Not, not, I was away from everything. If you've been trying to contact me, including my solicitors, everybody, I'm sorry. I haven't answered my phone for probably eight, nine days. Whilst I've just been sorting my own, my own family problems out. Um, so I'm back on it now. And as of tomorrow, I'm travelling the country again. Now that I know my kids are all right, I'm back out. So we will... <clears throat> There's other points that need, need clarifying as well. And seeing as I've got 10,000 people watching this, I think I should clarify them to a, a large audience. Um, last week... Of the, people have heard a lot about this undercover footage and the documentary is coming out of me. I spoke to someone who lied to me about something, Lucy Brown. Remember Lucy? She used to work with me. I spoke to someone who lied to me about what Lucy Brown was doing with her documentary and it involved my wife. And I rang Lucy Brown up. And when I rang Lucy Brown up, I think it was after a few beers as well, a couple of, last week, a couple of weeks ago, whatever. And, um, and I said some pretty, pretty horrid things to her. 
that I shouldn't have said. That's the reality of it. And <clears throat> to clear some things up, when I spoke to Lucy, I realised that she was upset. And she was upset because she had um, been accused of withholding footage from... This was to do with Tracy Blackwell, the Free Boys documentary. And what I, did, what I wasn't aware of was... And I, only after hanging up a, the phone with Lucy, I started looking. I, whilst I was in prison, Tracy spoke at a demonstration. Now, there was a complete... In fact, it wasn't a crosswise. I spoke to Tracy earlier. At that time, I, I'm going to go back again even further now to the Ali Dower situation, which I promised myself I'd never talk about. The only reason why I'm talking about it is because, again, I saw, I saw messages this week of people planning to target Lucy Brown when she's out and about. It's not snitches get stitches because that, that, that's the whole point that's wrong with this is because Lucy didn't really... Look, people planning to target Lucy is not right at all and I don't take any satisfaction from that and I absolutely do not want that because from starters, Lucy never withheld any footage for Tracy Blackwell's um, documentary. At the time of doing Tracy Blackwell, the Free Boys documentary, I had huge problems. It was just after Day for Freedom. I generally didn't know who I could trust. I was being told that half the footage that we had was lost and at the time at the time when I spoke to Tracy I may not have believed it was lost I may have believed it was all because I but now in hindsight as we as we've gone further on Caden's suitcase did get lost with footage on it it ended up coming back to Gatwick but at that moment at that time I did say to Tracy that my team I can't trust my team this is what's gone on and I, th and I did blame Lucy at that time and, and generally as the months went on afterwards it wasn't, it wasn't Lucy. Lucy didn't withhold any footage. Yeah? So she held, withheld no footage. With regards to threatening my wife when I was in prison, um, she was ringing up. Um, she was shouting at my wife, according to my wife. She was ringing up, but she was angry because there was a hotel bill that had been put in her name, which was sorted the minute I got out of prison. But I, I read a lot of things, because when I read the statement about Lucy ringing my wife, it, it read like Lucy had something to do with threats of acid attacks against my family, which is, again... Complete lies. Absolutely lies. So anyone out there, and I, I, I take this because I spoke to people close to Lucy and I don't take any satisfaction in the fact that she's scared. She shouldn't be scared. She has nothing to be scared of. Um, people should not be targeting her. With regards to clear, to clear things up, because I never spoke publicly about the Ali Dower situation. Do you know why I didn't speak publicly? Because I didn't trust anything. I didn't even, when I met Lucy the first time after that Ali Dower situation, I felt like they were all videoing me and trying to set me up. Okay, and I, and I do get paranoid about things, of course. You would if you was me. So at that time of the documentary, in the morning when I heard Ali Dower wanted to speak, I generally thought, could be a good idea, yeah? Get him to ring me. He didn't ring me. Now, in the sense of him talking, if he was to talk, which I, and, and I, I said at the start, I thought it, it would have been a good idea. Yeah? Not publicised to the whole world that he's talking, just if it was done on my terms, my terms would have been Ali Dower apologising to my mother for the upset he caused. It was a free speech event. If it was without prior publication and no one knew, I'd have walked him up on stage and said, right, it's a free speech event. We're all here for free speech. Let's give him his five minutes of fame. Yeah? Uh, but it done in the, in the right way, because it had to be done in the right way, because it could have caused a chaos. And my, pro my job as the organiser of demonstration is not to have trouble. Now, the way it was done, when Lucy put out his invite, which I did ring Lucy and say delete it, which she didn't delete and wouldn't delete, I then did make a public profile on my Facebook saying he's not invited, he's not coming, and someone in my team removed that. I d all of these things did happen, but do I believe Lucy Brown was a complete left-wing plant involved and her job was to destroy us? No, it wasn't, not at all, wholeheartedly. I, that was not the case at all. So anyone out there who feels like they're giving Lucy... A, I know L Lucy put something up about telling the police on the FLA. That's nothing to do with me. If, if people are giving, trying to give Lucy a hard time and think it's on my behalf, please don't, yeah? Because, A, it's not right. B, she didn't hold, withhold the footage. C... Um, yeah, it, it's not right. So, um, that's the reality of it, yeah? That's, and to be honest, the reality of it, I, I caught up with Tracy Blackwell earlier and I found out more developing stories on, on, on her child's case and what's happened with the coroner. Now, I'll be bringing you a video, hopefully, towards the end of the week on that. I'll be catching up with Gus tomorrow to find out the latest on his situation. Um, as I said, I just had eight or nine days there where I had my own problems going on, um, my own problems to sort out. So, if you just... But the, the Lucy thing, when I spoke to Lucy... And I was, I was pretty angry with her and I said some pretty horrid and very wrong things to her because I felt or I'd been told that she was trying to target my wife. 
and my family, which again, I shouldn't believe lies because they completely turned out to be lies once I checked them out. But there's a, there's a lot of things out there. So yeah, the point in this or going on to this um, is just to, yeah, the point in it. Yeah, yeah. The point in this, when I thought about what I said to Lucy and me ringing Lucy is I shouldn't have done it. And least of all, when I heard, when I heard what Tracy's speech had said, and Tracy was right for saying it because that's what, that's what in the conversations in the days after day for freedom, I'd had that conversation with her. But in hindsight, as time went on, it was very clear that that's, that was not the case. So clearly again, Lucy didn't withhold footage. Clearly again, Lucy didn't threaten any violence towards my wife or in any way involved in any threats towards my wife. And, um, and reading comments or comments from people that are in any way threatening her, not on my, it's, I don't want it on my watch, or I don't want it in any way linked or saying you're supporting me by doing that because that's not what I want. I worked with Lucy for 12 months and we had our disagreements. I think she was incredibly naive having a friendship with Ali Dower because I don't believe he's friends with her. I think he absolutely was using her and I think he did use her, but I think that her, that was more on her principal positions that he abused. Um, and at that time, I, it's hard for me to know what to trust or what to believe. So, yeah. Deck Young, veteran, what's happening? And uh, there is Jack, and it's very hard to know where you're treading, mate. But where I am treading and where I was treading does not result in people in any way threatening Lucy Brown. Or in any way abusing Lucy, and I don't. And, and I had many problems with Lucy. Lucy had many problems with me, with, with me, and that's just the reality of it. And I think that it was done out of naivety on her part with Ali Dower. The reality was, well, I did agree in that morning that it, it could have been a good idea, or the day before. But he, I can't have someone speaking at my demonstration that won't even speak to me. Lucy wouldn't give me his number. No one would give me his number. He wouldn't ring me. He wouldn't contact me. And then he thinks he can just turn up on the day with Mohammed Hijab with a big gum shield in and expect to stand up and speak at a demonstration. Not the case. So there were lots of problems around then that I wish didn't happen, but they did. Um, that's it. I've got big plans coming for next year. Massive plans for next year. Um, I'll reveal them all in more of a... This was just a quick live stream I was whacking on. Um, that's it. I'll come back in a minute with another live stream. Yeah, but that was just, I just wanted to clear up the great betrayal, the great Brexit betrayal, 1st of December, start making your plans. I've checked today for a PA system, for a stage, for an event. After the, do you know what it was? After standing outside the Old Bailey anyway on that event, it was amazing. The feeling was amazing. This is the biggest political betrayal our country's ever seen. Are you going to sit back and ignore it? If you voted to leave the European Union, we're not leaving the European Union. They're still dictating to us on our laws, on everything. I want to make a more detailed video about everything, but join us on the 1st of December. The full details will be coming out on a website. Everything will be going live in the next couple of days. Um, I'm just wanting to get this out there, spread the word, put it out everywhere. Hashtag the great betrayal or Brexit betrayal, whatever you like. That's what it is. And... Um, yeah, just because we're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get us. Jesus, you wouldn't even believe some of the, sto the other stories I I'll leave them for my book. But um, the march, we're going to be marching. We will be marching on the 1st of December. Make your plans, yeah? Make your plans. See you in London.